Since 2019, an unusual ballet has been playing out in low Earth orbit with Elon Musk as the conductor, the Starlink constellation of satellites being deployed in massive numbers, at this point outnumbering all the other satellites in orbit combined by a substantial margin, providing high-speed internet service to customers across the globe regardless of how remote they might be. However, in recent months, the FCC has announced that a strangely large number of Starlink satellites have been deorbited, nearly 500 in a six-month time frame, with unknown consequences to the atmosphere and to the Starlink constellation itself. Some have argued that this is simply natural and routine deorbiting of satellites that were only supposed to last for about five years anyway, and these 500 or so satellites are simply the first mass deorbiting of satellites that were launched in 2019 to 2020. But is this indeed the case, or is there something else going on with Starlink? All of this and more coming at you on The Angry Astronaut right now. Two, one. Ignition and lift off. Go SpaceX, go Starlink. So I think you can hear from the tone of that SpaceX representative's voice that Starlink has become a pretty boring and routine thing as of late. Actually, it's been that way for quite some time. SpaceX has gotten so good at deploying these satellites that nobody can really compete with them, in spite of the fact that others have ambitions of deploying vast constellations of satellites. Only SpaceX has the combination of launch cadence and reliability to really deploy huge constellations in a short amount of time. But in recent days, things have looked a little odd for the Starlink constellation, at least as far as some observers have concerned. It was revealed on July 2nd to the Federal Communications Commission that SpaceX had deorbited 472 Starlink satellites during the six-month period from December 2024 to May of 2025, an average of 2.6 per day, which marked a significant increase from the previous period of six months when just 73 met a fiery demise. At present, Starlink has around 7,900 satellites in low Earth orbit, meaning that this comprised a pretty substantial percentage of that constellation being deorbited in only six months, and these satellites are generally dwelling at an altitude of five to six hundred kilometers and SpaceX's plans is to add thousands more by the end of 2027. It's going to be a little bit more difficult to do this however if they continue to deorbit satellites at a rate of a hundred per month. Now if this were the first significant deorbiting of Starlink satellites in history it would be approximately correct given a five-year lifespan for the satellites and how many satellites were orbited between the end of 2019 and the middle of 2020. But that's not actually the case, including this mass deorbiting. About a thousand or so Starlinks have actually been deorbited, which is more than expected if we are talking about a five-year lifespan for the satellites. And there's another problem with this particular mass deorbiting. Even though most of the deorbited Starlinks, about 430 of them, were part of their first generation spacecraft, or Gen 1, they were virtually all less than five years old, and the rest belonged to the second generation, or Gen 2 network, which shouldn't have been deorbited, period. Suffice it to say that it's not quite clear why so many Starlinks have been deorbited at this time, although a small portion will have done so due to failure and some would have been reaching the end of their life, but others remain a mystery. 
Now, most such satellites burn up without incident in the atmosphere, but there have been some exceptionally rare cases where chunks of metal did survive all the way down to the Earth's surface. However, Generation 2 and 3 satellites are now designed to be better at disintegration during atmospheric re-entry. And of course, some scientists remain concerned about the release of potentially harmful chemicals into the atmosphere, which they fear might damage the sensitive ozone layer, especially given how many of these satellites have been burning up. But there's another question, of course, the most important question, why is all of this happening? And I think I might have the answer. I don't think it has anything to do with Starlink itself, but rather an unforeseen event, and that was extremely active solar activity. It did a lot more damage to these satellites than was anticipated. In November of 2023, after a particularly violent coronal mass ejection, the Northern Lights were observed for the first time in recorded history in Turkey. A very, very southerly latitude for this type of phenomena, filling the sky with vivid red, green, and violet colors over the Mamara and Black Sea regions. And the solar activity just continued to increase after that, with one solar storm after another, one coronal mass ejection after another. We are indeed fortunate that nothing really serious struck the planet that might potentially have been able to knock out the vast majority of our satellites in orbit to say nothing of our power grid but overall I wouldn't be surprised if the Starlink constellation suffered greater damage than was anticipated now once again most satellites are shielded against this sort of thing but Starlink satellites are mass produced and not particularly large nor are they particularly expensive when you compare them to their gigantic brothers out in geosynchronous orbit, so it could be that Starlink suffered a bit more damage than SpaceX was anticipating, and that could mean more mass deorbitings here in the near future. My suspicion is, is that SpaceX has already corrected this problem with their Generation 3 satellites, and this problem should taper off as time goes on, but nevertheless, I suspect that the Starlink constellation may not grow grow as fast as Elon wants it to grow, keep in mind that all of these satellites is the equivalent of eight Falcon 9 launches, so if they continue to lose satellites at this rate, that's 16 Falcon 9 launches per year just to replace the lost satellites, so it could be a bit of a handicap to Elon's long-term ambition of having more than 10,000 of these things in orbit. Unless, of course, we can get Starship into operation because that thing can deploy enormous numbers of satellites in a single launch. I'll keep you up to date on all of this. Thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'd like to thank all of those who have contributed in bringing me almost to my fundraising goal to get me to Australia. I am so astonished that all of this happened so quickly. If you'd like to help me get the rest of the way to Australia, all the details are in the description. So until next time, I urge all of you to stay angry about space.